We start off by saying, go dogs, beat the ducks, let's go. Football. Big time. What a weekend. What a weekend. That was big time. Oh, I watched it. I watched it. What a spectacular game. Coach DeBoer had those guys ready to roll. It was big time. You went big tonight. Big time. We went big. Was that the plan or was that? We worked on it yesterday. Uh, we've been uh, talking about it, but when you have new guys, you can't you can't go too fast. You know, you got to slow build versus guys, you know, some of the rotations, new guys are playing, um, forgetting some of the plays. So we got to keep it simple. We worked on it, had a couple things that we could do with them and uh, um, didn't know how it would be. Uh, but we went down six to up seven. So uh, it worked. Hey, you know, just the things that Christensen was doing that was causing you guys problems were what? Him ready to just have, he has great footwork. He gets great position. He's very strong. We couldn't hold our ground, and we didn't make it difficult for him to catch. And when you give a good player like that and get close to the basket, it's a problem. In the second half, when we went zone with the two big guys, when he turned, he was going against Mount Rushmore. Now he had two guys, and that was a big that was a big difference, I think, in the second half. Coach, is this what you expected from Keon Menifield? And if so, why was he so under the radar coming into this season? You know, in recruiting, uh, you know, I, I played with it. We had at Syracuse one year. We had the number one recruiting class in the country, and there was six guys. And the worst recruit in the country, or in that recruiting class, was a guy named Lawrence Moton. And no one knew of him. He was like out of the top 100. He was like 88th. He became, he started his fourth game. He became the all time leading scorer in the history of the Big East. And I know you know the history of the Big East. Uh, you know, some guys slip through the cracks, some guys fit a system. Thank God I've got a great staff who identified and watched and connected. And thank the Lord that there was a lot of schools out there that didn't see it. <laughs> and, he is a talent. Uh, he is special. Even in the last game where he had whatever he had, uh, someone said, gosh, he played great. I said, no, he didn't. Like, wait until you see it. Uh, he was really efficient tonight. He got in the paint, passed it, made some big time shots at the end of a shot clock. And the thing that makes him special is he always smiles. He never gets down. It's a great lesson for anybody out there watching, coaching kids or whatnot. Just a great attitude. I don't want to say the name that you're thinking because he had his own shoe. Or is that who you're thinking of? Because I, I was thinking like he's, and again, we've talked about like, you know, when you watched Allen Iverson, his slitheriness and his, you know, and his 40 inch vertical and all these other things. Um, but I've seen, you know, players um, that just know how to do it. And he just knows how to do it. I was thinking like a lot of Oh, yeah. No. Listen. He's very difficult to guard. Um, he is slithery. Um, he's got an incredible balance. And he's got incredible shot-making ability. You know, when you watch good teams, like usually good, you know, NCAA tournament and stuff, teams will shut the other teams down with their offense. And it's always a guy. You remember when Carson Edwards had that one great run? They, just, they don't need a screen. They don't need anything. They can make a big basket. When you, He made two at the end of the shot clocks tonight or – just very few people can do that, and he can. And it, it seemed like the just from his first start to this one, he said tonight that he intentionally started slower because he wanted the game to come to him. Yeah. Just to have that patience for. How many guys would say that freshman on the on the planet? Nobody. And that's what makes him great. And that's you know it's like the same thing. It's let it come to me. Don't force it. And uh, and he's I mean this is his third game as a Division one. And he was forced into the starting lineup after a game. And so he's just going to keep getting better and better. He needs to keep working on the defensive end. Uh, he's playing a lot of minutes. Um, you know, he's going to get used to that. There's going to be ups and downs. Um, but he is a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a special player. And you know, I'm not trying to pin you into anything, but can you put him back on the bench after the start? You know, we're going to play the best guys that it's going to take to win. And I think, you know, him, he, you know, I, you know, I, I thought all our freshmen tonight, I thought Corin Johnson came in and played phenomenal. 
I thought Tyler Lindhart came in. If he would have made the three, he, he looked comfortable, he looked confident, and he didn't play in the first two games. So really excited about that. I think Corn's scratching the surface. You know, and you know, we're just going to play. I think you know, uh, Noah Williams was coming up to me yesterday in practice and say, Coach, this is so good for our team because we're building a lot of confidence and a lot of depth of confidence. And uh, as you see our foul trouble, <laughs> you're going to need that bench. Um, but you're right, Percy. It's going to be hard to keep him off the court. Keon played 40 minutes tonight. He played big minutes, but out on the court, he doesn't seem to get tired. Yeah. Well, I was telling that I was saying I, the the Allen Iverson comparison was when I, I remember the first time I watched him when I was, you know, and again I'm not comparing him to him, but the one thing that was so incredible was the fact like when I was scouting, I watched him play a game and it looked like he could have played two games after it. Do you know the guy who just like, oh, we're playing basketball today? Oh, we're playing seven hours and we're going to play. And he just just plays, if that makes sense. I don't know. It's kind of, I wish I had that cardio. Uh, and Cole played big minutes again tonight. Yeah, and Cole did a good job. Um, he, he shot the ball well. I mean, for us to make, what do we make, 12 threes is a great number. In the second half, we had 12 assists. The first half, the ball wasn't moving. We looked stagnant. Um, um, they were switching on everything, so we had to pass and cut more. Second half, we did that. Good things happen when we get into the paint. I thought Jamal Bay had two great plays, passes. He made the pass to Keon at the end of the clock. He made the lob to Braxton. He really stepped up as a senior tonight. And it's great when you see that and then watch him on the defensive end. And when we had to get stops, we got him. And, and, uh, if you wanted to cut down, if on your sheet for tomorrow's practice was to Concentrate on your bigs to not foul as much. How would you do that? Well, the best way to, to, for post defense is pressure on the ball, and then you got a three quarter. You got to make it difficult for them to get the ball, and uh, that's what we've got to do a better job at. You know, Christensen. What we did a great job. You know, uh, Gooden was a guy who was leading scorer coming in here. Stain. We were really worried about. Um, from the three-point line, and we thought Christensen was good, but we didn't know that he would have the impact, and that's on us. Um, we had to pr prepare better for that. Um, and I know next time the way our bigs are in terms of competitive, I thought in the second half our bigs were pretty darn good. Uh, but that was pretty much probably on us, not preparing them the way I didn't know he was that. And with your bigs playing both of them together, is that something that we can anticipate seeing more of, it, or will that be more of a situational deal? Of course. I mean, you're going to play teams that are really, really big. Teams have hurt us. You know, then we're going to get Keon Brooks back, and then we're going to get Noah back, and you're talking 6'9", six, 6'6". Six, six. So that's, you know, when we look like that, that's, that's when it becomes devastating. That's when the paint becomes a no-entry zone, and that's what we've, we've got to get to. And it, it worked tonight. doesn't mean it's going to work against anybody, but like Percy said, I think what we're doing is we're developing weapons. Uh, on the team, guys that can really play and impact the game, and, and that's it's really helping our depth right now and getting some confidence, getting some minutes. How and big uh, is it to start? Sorry, how big is it to start three zero, especially after these previous two seasons? There were some tough losses early on. You know, lessons learned. Um, obviously, uh, winning is great, um, but I, like I told the team, like we just DMGB it doesn't matter. We just got to keep getting better. Like we want, we want to be prepared to win championships, and we got to clean up a lot of things. Uh, how we're starts uh, fouling a little bit, um, so some different lineups. Um, uh, but I'm really proud of the guys adjusting on the fly. Those injuries happen when one day to prepare, and when you start playing games, there's not a lot of practice time, and energy is the is their greatest resource, and you don't want to sit there and pound them in there um, because they're kids. They got to go to school. They're you know, they've got stresses and pressures and all these other things that student athletes deal with, and you know you're managing energy too. Uh, you said last week that you know, Brooks he would be more of a day to day yeah. Type of situation. Yeah, he he practiced yesterday a little bit, but you know the biggest thing is you get well you get one body you know, and you just want to make sure you're at 100 percent and you you feel good. You know, and uh, so I'm sure he'll practice tomorrow and, uh, you know, get ready for Cal Baptist. And, uh, any, I don't know, uh, you, you guys don't do this in my college, but for my Cal Baptist, would it be questionable, probable? Any you know, I'm not going to answer that now, personally, other than I would say he's day to day, but I'm, yeah. And Noah? Uh, he's not going to play. He won't be playing against Cal Baptist. Hey, hey, you know, just for you to be 3 0 for the first time in your 
you know, it's all about winning. I, I want to be, I want to be winning at the end of the year. You know, all the preseason stuff. We've got a lot to prove. Um, we got a lot of guys in there, and we got the a lot of personalities that got a chip on their shoulder and uh, want to do great things. This is just another game. We learn, we win, and uh, hopefully move on and and get better after this game and you know, be really prepared when we hit Pac-12 conference. And uh, college basketball is crazy. If you look across the country and you watch games, you see upsets. You know, Colorado goes down, they lose to Grambling, they come back and beat number 14 Tennessee at Tennessee, which is almost impossible to do. It's college basketball, which, you know, you respect everybody, fear nobody, and just prepare and get better. And that's been our philosophy. That was that one of the best football games you've ever seen. <laughs> it's got to be one of the best. Uh, I mean, are you, I don't want to say are you shitting me, but I'm saying it. Are you shitting me? That was unbelievable. <laughs> that was like that's like that's what college sports is all about.